Hey everybody, welcome to another five minute rounds. How exciting. <laughs> I uh, am super excited to show you this case. It is an absolutely beautiful sample. This vet did such a good job with preparing this sample that I just had to show you. Um, this is a lymph node aspirate from an 11 year old beagle who was noted to have swellings under his jaw and then his owner took him into his vet where the vet noticed that this dog had enlarged submandibular and popliteal lymph nodes. So those lymph nodes were aspirated and that's what we're looking at is a sample of the, I think this one was the popliteal lymph node. Um, so this is really, really beautiful because one of the first things is, is that the sample is prepared really nicely where the cells have room to spread out. There's um, a nice monolayer of cells. So you can still see that there's white space sort of between the, the cells where are you, Arrow? There's um, good white space still between between the cells, and we'll look at those closer, of course, but they're not just totally crammed up on top of each other, which is really nice. I'm going to move into an area that actually is a little too thick to interpret, just to give you an idea of kind of what a not nice area might look like. I mean, it's hard to find because this vet did such a good job with, with um, smearing this out. And you might be wondering, well, how can I get a sample like that? Um, we'll talk about that in another video or probably a little tutorial on how I suggest preparing your samples, but they definitely smeared this sample, but they probably put like zero minimal or like very minimal pressure on the slide when they were smearing. Um, so yeah, so they didn't get a lot of lysis and they got a nice uh, monolayer of cells. Seriously, I can hardly find an area that's too thick to look at because it's so good. Sorry. I hope you don't get nauseous. <laughs> if you do, my apologies. I hope you don't lose your lunch. Okay, here's a good example. So this, oh, we're out of focus. All right, now we're back. This area is just a little too thick. I'm not gonna go down and look at this area because I know that the, the cells just are too piled up on top of each other. Here's another little area. This, this area, not a good spot to evaluate. Um, so I'm actually gonna move a little bit more out where I was. Close your eyes. I'm gonna scan fast because we're running out of time already and I haven't even told you what this is. Do, do, do. Okay, I'm going out here. So I'm actually really close to the edge of this smear, and that's because the cells have plenty of room to spread out, and I'll be able to tell what size these cells are. So this is a lymph node, um, and in a lymph node you expect to see lymphocytes, of course. And in a normal lymph node you should see primarily small lymphocytes, um, and that goes for a reactive lymph node too. In a lymph node that has primarily large lymphocytes, that's when we are calling things lymphoma. And one way that you can tell whether a lymphocyte is large or small is compare it to the size of a neutrophil. So here we have a neutrophil right there. And we're gonna compare these lymphocyte sizes to that neutrophil. Here's a really nice intact lymphocyte. And this one is about the same size to a little bit bigger than this neutrophil. So we know that's a, what we call an intermediate to large lymphocyte. We can also see a nice prominent nucleolus in there. So that actually is a blast, um, but nonetheless, the majority of these cells around here are too big. They're intermediate to large in size. Um, and we don't like that at all. That That's a very concerning, it's not concerning, it's lymphoma. I mean, that's what, <laughs> that's what it is. Um, so here's some more areas. Oh, here's another little neutrophil to compare these cell sizes to right here. So neutrophil, and then this is a perfect example of all these guys that are large lymphocytes that are much larger than this neutrophil. I'm just going to point these out. These guys are actually ruptured. They're sort of, you can kind of still see a little cell border there, but you really want to ignore cells that look like that because they um, they are ruptured and really aren't reliable to, to tell what their size is once they've ruptured. But these, you can see beautiful intact cytoplasmic borders. So unfortunately for this pup, um, even though this makes for a beautiful cytology, like most things in pathology that are really neat and beautiful and all those words, um, this is a lymphoma. So this dog has large cell lymphoma, unfortunately, but um, really, really nice preparation and a really great example of a large cell lymphoma in a dog. So hopefully we can get him started on some chemo and get him feeling a little bit better for the time being. All right, hope you enjoyed this. Make sure you uh, comment with any questions or anything that I can clear up if there is anything at all. Otherwise, thanks for watching.